Hello everybody, welcome back in my office. My name is Jochen Kerkmann and today we're going to talk about a specific RGB product, namely the convection RGB. The name convection RGB says it's mainly for monitoring convective clouds, severe convective storms, but it has also some other interesting applications. The first case, which I display for you on the screen, is from Northern Italy. It's a convective case from summer 2006. You can see on northern Italy a major cloud system, convective cloud, that is in Veneto and Friuli area. This is the high resolution visible image. You can already see some details like the overshooting top here, radial cirrus clouds expanding from it and also some gravity waves. Now this is the visible image that shows you the thickness of the cloud. If we want to see the cloud face, we use RGB composites like this natural color RGB, where ice clouds are cyan color and water clouds are pinkish to whitish color. But we do not see the particle size information well in this RGB product. For this we use the day microphysics RGB. Next image, you may have seen that before, red is ice clouds and more yellowish is water clouds. You can see a bit the particle size information from orange for small ice. You see that? I take the cursor here in this part of the image and then dark red or red to dark red for large ice particles. But the contrast between orange and dark red is not very good. So we have created with the same 3.9 channel another RGB product, which we can toggle, the convection RGB product, which has the 3.9 minus 10.8 difference on the green beam. And here the contrast between small eyes and large eyes is much stronger from yellow to red. I can toggle it, the day microphysics RGB and the day convection product. They both show the same information, just the contrast in the convection RGB is much, much better. Maybe the animation shows a bit better what I mean about the small ice particles seen in this convection RGB product. Let's start here at 11.57 UTC and run the loop slowly by manual animation. I go forward and come here to the first image where this yellow signal pops up. I go back 15 minutes earlier, no yellow signal and here it pops up in the middle of the convective system. That shows a new convective cell is bringing small ice particles to the top of the cloud, which actually then in the next image continues. And then somehow the small ice particles spread all around the area. Let's look at a second hail case, this time from Germany in 2013. You can see the impressive hail image here on the screen. 14 centimeters hailstorms in southern Germany in the area. You can see here the hail symbols on the map in the area of the Black Forest. Now, for this I have also the convection RGB loop, which starts at this time, 11.15 UTC in the morning, late morning. First image shows already a convective storm. I use the cursor over France, the Vosk Mountains. But this is not the case. Our case will develop in the next minutes over the Black Forest. So we go on. And here's the first signal, this strong pop-up of yellow color, small ice particles indicating possible severe thunderstorm with small ice. This expands very quickly. So also the growth rate if I toggle, is impressive and shows a, a very strong development until here. Then at 12.30 a new convective cell pops up at the southern edge also in yellow color and also quickly expands. So we had a very nice signal here from the convection RGB that something very severe is happening. So far we have seen satellite images at a frequency of 15 minutes, the standard frequency of MSG. In 2013 we also did some tests at 2.5 minute rapid scan frequency. And we have a case, another severe hailstorm case from Germany that shows how it would look like in future or will look like uh, when we have 2.5 minute rapid scans with MTG. So I load the loop, a convection RGB product, which shows here the development of a severe hailstorm in central part of Germany. I stop it here because it's already the end of the development, which lasted several hours. I go back, run it again for you. You can see that the storm develops in an area of no clouds here in Hessen. There it starts. It quickly expands and it has a ring structure and typical yellow color for small ice particles. So far we have not talked about the recipe of this RGB product. It's now displayed here on the screen. It seems to be complicated. Don't be worried. 
the important thing is the green component, which is the 3.9 minus 10.8 channels difference. This is the component needed to detect cloud particle size, which is the main application of this RGB product. So if you want to create it yourself, you can read it here from the screen. That's the recipe of the RGB product. And on the next slide, we see the color interpretation. There are not many colors in this RGB product. Low things, low ground, ocean, everything is bluish colors. And then we have red and yellow for the high cold ice clouds. Red is for large ice particles and yellow for small ice particles. Cirrus clouds have a slightly different color, but that's not so important. The three most important colors are blue, yellow and red. The main application is convection monitoring and in particular for those storms with strong updrafts that can produce strong downdrafts and hail. Yellow is not always strong updraft, small ice. Yellow can also be related to just very, very cold clouds. Here we have an example from Hurricane Igor in 2010. You see this strong yellowish color here in the cloud system. If I look at the 3.9 channel shown here below, it is not showing small ice particles, normal large ice particles. But if I look at the infrared channel here in the lower left, it is a very cold cloud, extremely cold, which also produces yellow color. Then we have another explanation for yellowish clouds. Yellow can be the case in small ice particles, yes, but in clouds with high cold base, not strong updraft. The best example that I found is from northern India and uh, here the Nepal area where we have the Himalaya mountains. You see this very yellowish convective clouds developing during daytime, which has nothing to do with strong updraft, it's just related to this very high base cold clouds. We also have a severe convective storm in this case here over Bangladesh with a yellow for strong updraft and we also have a sun glint area that uh, is here over the ocean but also a bit over the clouds here in India producing yellowish color. So this is an interesting example because we have three different yellows here. One is the high base cloud, one the strong updraft and one the case related to sun glint. Now yellow and more yellow coming. Yellow can also be the case in dust polluted clouds. So here on the low, lower right part we see the dust RGB presented to you in the previous uh, lecture. The dust color is seen here. The dust gets entrained into this cloud system and produces a lot of small ice particles. And small ice particles here are shown in yellow color related to dust and not to updraft strength. It's a good detection possibility for dust polluted cirrus clouds. And a second example for dust polluted cloud is this famous dust case from March 2008. The dust cloud seen crossing the Mediterranean Sea going to Turkey and Greece and wonder why the, the convection RGB shows a very yellowish cloud related to the dust entrainment into this cloud system. So dust going into the cloud produces small ice particles. They stay in the air for a long, long time. So once you have these small ice particles, this cloud will move and stay maybe for several days in the atmosphere. The last example of yellow color is small ice particles in high level lee cloudiness. I could just show you many examples. I've taken this one, which is from March 2007, where we have a strong southwesterly flow over southern Europe, Italy, and the southeastern European area. You see red for large ice particles and yellow for small ice particles related to four different mountain wave systems from Corsica, Italy, here over the Croatian mountains, and then here over Romanian mountains. So this was the last yellow example with lee clouds. I have another lee cloud system here now in northern Europe. Uh, you see it here on the satrap analysis uh, shown here on the infrared image, lee clouds over Iceland. Also these lee clouds are totally yellowish. You can see that here is the satrap analysis. You see the upper level flow and the yellowish color meaning wave cloud. Recently we found a new application of the convection RGB, which is the detection of high level supercooled clouds. And with high level, I, I don't mean 3 km, I mean 7 to 10 km high. The color is not yellowish, a bit similar, it's, I would call it cyan color, cyan color, which in this case is high level super cooled cloud, but not ice, it's a water cooled cloud. The second example, I found it recently over the Atlantic in Metisat 10. Also here we have this typical color, cyan color of high super cooled clouds. That's also an interesting application, not for convection, but for maybe aviation. 
As a summary case, I'm looking at today weather. And I've selected uh, a case from the Himawari 8 satellite over Australia. The convection RGB is running here on the left side. and the right side, I have just highlighted some of the interesting features that I see in this loop. This loop is running for six hours. The dominant feature that you see is a large frontal system crossing Australia, mostly composed of large ice particles in red color, like here. But there are also some embedded supercooled clouds in it, which have this brighter cyan color that we have seen before. Also, we have a bit yellowish color here at the border of the jet streak with embedded transverse cirrus. So there could be turbulence related to this jet streak over Australia. So that's the uh, feature number one. Feature number two is high-level wave clouds. So we have everything here in one case, high-level wave clouds over the mountains of south southeast Australia. Feature number three is on the east coast of Australia. It's a deep convective storm, possibly severe, it looks at least, with strong yellowish color here in the area of Brisbane. Feature number four is in northern Australia, typical tropical convection, very cold ice clouds, not strong updraft, but yellowish color. And the last feature I would like to mention is again the sun glint that pops up here in the northern part of the image. You see this strange color moving through the image. This is not a cloud, this is the sun glint feature. So we have a kind of summary case. The only thing missing here is a dusty cirrus cloud. Otherwise, we would, everything would be perfectly in this image. So this was a nice summary of the convection RGB. Please keep in mind that the main application of this RGB product is convection monitoring, the detection of convective cells with strong updrafts. And that can lead to strong downdraft, wind and hail. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you liked this video and you find it useful and uh, comprehensive. We presented the convection RGB. Please use it in your operational environment. Thank you very much. See you next time.